Let me start International Spoken ESOL Exam, Expert Level, 20th of July, 2023. Alan Martin, the exam begins. Hello, my name is Roxana Dane. Can you spell your family name for me, please? Sure, it's M-A-R-T-I-N. Thank you. Which country are you from? I am from Mexico. Oh, I see. Now, part one, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself and your ideas. Parental responsibilities. Why do you think some children become spoiled? Well, I mean, when I was a child, I was never spoiled by my parents. I usually was told what to do, and if I were in compliance, then I would just get grounded or something like that. So I don't think that I would I had had those issues when I was like little. I guess that others had. That was not my case. Next one, money management. Why do some people believe it's wrong to take out a loan to buy something? To be completely honest, the very first thing that you should keep in mind is that you should to be careful with the money that you are like asking for. Um, and you should have, you should to also have some other, um, let's say, finances, goals. You see, you have to consider that you have to pay your bills and you also have to have money to uh, buy your house. Okay, interesting. Next topic, superstitions. Why do you think, what do you think are the origin of superstitions? Well, I guess that um, it comes to not understanding many things when perhaps a civilization is just like starting to understand each other Perhaps when it comes to natural phenomena like uh, earthquakes or storms, they could just fall back on like, I don't know, like just made up stories or, or something like that to actually understand what's going on. In some other cases, you could just uh, use coincidence to uh, explain why something that you could consider, let's say, bad luck would be something that you would see as... Okay, okay, interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Now, part two. Okay. Uh, we are going to role play some situations. Mm -hmm. I want you to start to respond. First situation. Mm -hmm. We are classmates. I start. What do you think of our new teacher? She seems a bit strict to me. Well, I don't think that she's actually uh, strict. I guess that in some cases, you just need to have homework in order to understand your subject, right? Yeah, I guess. However, it seems to me that she's a bit too far too demanding with us. Well, I don't know. I think that in my case, I have been doing my homework and it's totally fine. I haven't like, I don't get in trouble. Uh, perhaps we you, you just have to get used to it. Yeah, I guess it's a matter of perspective. Yeah, I mean, and also she like, she explains the classes really well. I think that she is really, let's say, uh, outspoken as well. Like she also explains really well what she's doing. Okay. Okay, nice. Second situation. Mm -hmm. We're best friends. I've told you I've been made redundant. You start. Okay, so we are best friends. Oh, okay, okay. We're best friends and I have told you that I have been made redundant. You start. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, hi, hi. So, I'm so sorry. I've just heard the bad news. How are you holding up? Actually, pretty bad. I didn't expect this at all. So, I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense that you would just be down in the dumps. However, you know, it's just something that happens, especially during our crisis. So it's not, I don't believe that it's actually something personal towards you. Um, perhaps, uh, have you have you thought about a, a new place to start working with? Well, right now, I feel so um, high and dry that yeah. I haven't thought of anything else, to be honest. I have no idea what to do. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. It's totally normal that you would just need some time to rethink about your 
some aspects and just like accept what is going on. That's something normal. You don't have to rush into getting a new uh, job or something, perhaps. Perhaps it would be also useful, a useful time to, you know, brush up on your skills. And so you could end up having an even better job, don't you think? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Now, part three. Okay. Uh, we're going to discuss something together. Let's talk and exchange ideas on how people can boost their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Here you have some ideas. Okay, thank you. Okay, you take 20 seconds to think about what you want to say. Okay. Please start. Okay, so one thing that I believe is terrible for your self-esteem is when you're comparing yourself to others. Like we all have different, um, let's say beginnings as well as context. So perhaps let's say you're not doing really well at school, then you might be undergoing some, let's say difficult situation at home. I don't know, a disrupted family, or perhaps you just simply live too far away from when you study, so it would be difficult for you to properly uh, to properly study. So if you see that your marks are not as good as the other kids, let's say, then uh, that at least that could like be understood. I don't think that you you should just compare yourself to others that I way. I see, I see. And what about ways of actually boosting self esteem? Okay, well, to my mind, there are many ways to uh, to let's say feel better with yourself. On the one hand, perhaps you could just have like a little uh, review of the things that you could do or that you think that you have current, that you have just done. Let's say, I don't know, you passed an important test. So you keep that in mind, or perhaps you were able to speak with a person that you were, I don't know, that you wanted to keep contact with. That's also something that you can be proud of yourself. That's also, I don't know, like just re reminding yourself about this and also, you know, perhaps also a great way to keep yourself in the mood is to make yourself keep clean Indeed. or something. Indeed. And uh, over here we have surround yourself with positive people. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think it works? Mm, sorry, could you explain? Could you, could you rephrase that? Yes. So as you can see on the paper, uh, mm -hmm. another option of actually boosting self-esteem is surrounding oneself mm -hmm. with positive people. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, so I believe that um, on the one hand, this could be pretty useful uh, due to the fact that these are going to always see the silver linings of everything out there. However, at some point, this can be a little bit uh, contradicting. Um, however, I also consider that if you are, let's say, speaking with a person who is always positive, they are going to not connect with you they're they're gonna seem like they are not listening to you um besides they could also uh, like like say explain something in a bad way i don't know something like that i see i see well i i beg to differ i believe that surrounding yourself with positive people is actually very helpful because it gives you a different insight a different perspective and perhaps uh, it makes you see the silver linings Mm, I guess I didn't see it that way. Perhaps we are just like clouded with our negative thoughts. We just might need someone else to um, make uh, turn our heads around so we can see the whole picture. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Now, part four. In part four, you are going to talk about something for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Your topic is the importance of body language. Okay. Uh, you have a piece of paper and a pencil. Thank you. Uh, you now have 30 seconds to write some notes to help you. So your topic is the importance of body language. Okay, so what I think is yeah, that... Uh, just remember, you still have 30 seconds oh, yes. if you want to okay. gather your Sorry. thoughts. Sorry, okay, okay. thank you.
Alan, please start. Okay. Okay. So, well, basically, body language is something that comes out naturally. Some people don't even actually think about it when they are just expressing themselves through their body. To my mind, this is also necessary as communication doesn't imply only like words. It's also about the tone that you say things and how you project yourself. For instance, if I am just like hunching back and I'm trying to tell you something important that should, that could show that I'm just being a little bit, let's say, uncomfortable or perhaps I'm not, I'm not confident about what I have to say. Um, on the other hand, people might not, um, might not find the correct words sometimes. So perhaps some just like hand gestures could, uh, um, let's say, illustrate a little bit what they are trying to convey with their, with their body language or their message. On the other hand, uh, yeah, basically there are some other aspects about, about body language that are necessary for, for, for useful communication. Um, let's say when you are like in a meeting and you have your hands around you, you don't seem open to discuss anything new. Um, now, could you tell me about an occasion when you had to adjust your body language? Well, definitely. Um, I was in a job interview and I remembered that I couldn't keep my hands like, uh, like just still. I was just moving my hand all the time and not actually being a useful manner. So I believe that it was a little bit distracting. Also, it showed that I was really nervous, which is completely normal in the kind of situation that I was in. However, um, you want to try to show yourself a little bit more confident. So I just try to like uh, keep an eye on that. And I just put my hands all over another and I was like applying some pressure. So I, on the one hand, wouldn't move one hand on the other was too busy while applying pressure. So in the end, that what ended up being actually useful since uh, later on during the job interview, I felt more comfortable about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. This is the end of the exam. Thank you.